the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. I welcome you all for the Sunday worship service. May God bless us through this worship. Let's pray. Gracious God and loving Father, we thank you Lord for the good day that you have given us. Thank you Lord for adding one more day in our lives. And you have been so faithful in leading us and guiding us and guarding us all through this month. As we all know that we are undergoing a different situation, a difficult situation and we are all going through crisis. But Lord, you have been so faithful in lifting us, holding us and taking care of us all through this situation. With the gratitude of mind and heart, we come into your presence to give you thanks and bring honor and glory for the Lord Almighty. As we begin this worship, we beseech your kind of presence to take care of us and lead us. And this service would be a fruitful service for all of us when we listen to the speaker of this day. In Christ's mighty name, we pray. Amen.
Let's continue to worship the Lord by following the second order of worship. Let us worship God. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Grace, mercy and peace will be with us from God the Father, from Jesus Christ the Father's Son, in truth and love. Let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The Lord is near to all who call on Him, to all who call on Him in truth. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall sing forth your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Adoration of the Trinity. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he who has come and is to come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, O God. Holy are you, O God. Holy are you, o Almighty. Holy are you, o Almighty. Holy are you, o Immortal. Holy are you, o Immortal. O Lord, our Redeemer, was crucified for us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, our Redeemer, was crucified for us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. O Lord, Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. O Lord, accept our praise and praises and have mercy upon us. O Lord, have compassion and mercy upon us. Let us enter into the act of confession. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'll get up and go to my father and I'll say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with your weaknesses. We, but we have who, one who in every respect has been tested as we are yet without sin. Therefore, let's all kneel and examine ourselves in silence. Let us humbly confess our sins to the Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful God, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we should have done. And we have done those things which we should not have done. And there is no health in us. But you, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Miserable offenders, spare them, O God, who confess their faults, restore them that are penitent according to your promises, declare to humankind in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful God, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and just life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon and remission for all our sins and time for amendment of life, the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Kindly be seated. Now we'll have the scripture portion read to us. Today's reading is taken from Gospel according to St. John chapter 10 verses from 11 to 16. Gospel according to St. John chapter 10 beginning to read at verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own 
and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. Here ends the gospel lesson. Thanks be to the O Christ. Greetings, one and all, grace and peace to you all. A little boy, aged seven, once said, I've learnt that you can't hide a piece of cabbage in a glass of milk. A fifteen-year-old said, I've learnt, though it is hard to admit it, I am secretly glad that my parents are strict with me. A 92-year-old man said, I have learned that I still have a lot to learn. If you follow Jesus and call yourself a disciple, then that's what the word disciple means. We never stop learning till we get to heaven. In the Gospel reading today, from John chapter 10, just verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd, says Jesus. The original hearers of this statement, the Jews would have immediately connected this with King David, the one 
course, who wrote the well-known 23rd Psalm. Two very important truths come out of this. One, human beings are like helpless, lost sheep. Dumb, in fact. Secondly, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are involved in rescue, in seeking and finding lost sheep. This gives us some insight, some understanding of Mark chapter 9 and verse 36. I'm sure you have heard this before. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were, they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. The heart of God is moved by people, by people. Whether it is you walking to the Uti market every morning to buy vegetables in this pandemic uh, period, lockdown period, or it is people in pain lying in hospital beds or in the corridors of hospitals, or whether it is lakhs and lakhs of people struggling today at this painful time to survive. That is where God's heart is. Where is God? He is at ground zero. He looks at us and his heart is moved with compassion. What does it mean when he says that he is the good shepherd? I'd like to highlight four things about this statement. Jesus being the good shepherd. Firstly, his sacrifice. His sacrifice. Verse 11 talks about his sacrifice when he says, The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Jesus laid down his life in order that you and I might find life. And later on, in verse 18, I have the authority to lay down my life and the authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. Looking forward to the cross, Jesus speaks now to his disciples. He speaks to the crowds listening to him. And he speaks looking down the centuries to you and me as we worship him today at St. Stephen's or in our different homes. He looked towards the cross and he said, That will be no accident. I am not a helpless victim, no. I choose to lay down my life in order that countless Thousands might find forgiveness and a new beginning with God. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, by His sacrifice 2,000 years ago, opened up, opened wide the door of heaven to all of us, to each one of us. Secondly, His commitment, His commitment. In verses 12 and 13, Jesus contrasts himself with the hired laborers. But you know, when trouble comes, what will the hired laborers do? They will only look after themselves. Number one, most important, only their own interests. But Jesus, Jesus is different. The good shepherd, what does he do? He lays down his life for his people. Today, every one of us has been touched in some way or the other by the pandemic. Some of us may be going through times of doubt and difficulty. 
others of us may have lost our joy, our peace, and maybe we ask, Lord, are you really the Good Shepherd? If you look through the Bible, we read many, many times about his commitment to us. He who began a good work in us will carry it to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Nothing, not principalities, nor powers, nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Again and again, the Bible says, Trust and do not be anxious. Cast all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. And the wonderful thing is that God does not leave you all by yourself to work it all out yourself, all by yourself. When you invited Jesus into your life, His Holy Spirit came to live within you. And He is with us 24-7. We are not alone. He gives us, what does He give us? He gives us His gifts. He gives us His fruit. He gives us His direction and purpose. And He gives us His power and strength to do the right thing. My dear brother, my dear sister, whatever you face at this moment in life, whatever the need in your heart, the Good Shepherd is utterly, utterly committed to your welfare. When you commit your problem to Him, your problem may not disappear, but you will know God's amazing grace and peace. And you will find His solution to your problems, to your situation. Whatever that might mean or be, or however long it takes. He is with you. He is utterly committed to you. Thirdly, His knowledge his knowledge, verses 14 and 15. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I wonder if you noticed that. Did you notice that? Jesus puts His knowledge of you and me on the same level as the relationship between himself and the Father. How come? Why? How is that? Because he is talking about a deep, a close knowledge. You can, you know, you can know people at different levels. You meet someone once or twice or thrice and you say, I know him. I know her, but he or she may not recognize you the next time you meet. But Jesus says here, at the deepest level of relationship, I know my people. How? In the way that the Father knows me and I know the Father. And then he says, my sheep know me. That's the depth of relationship Jesus opens up to you and to me. He is with us. He knows us. He knows your precise situation even at this current moment and how you feel at this time. <clears throat> I wonder, I wonder this morning if I'm speaking to someone right now who looks at the next few weeks and months with apprehension and with anxiety, maybe even with fear. You've got many unanswered questions, yes, gnawing inside of you. But take hold, take hold of these verses and be encouraged. Jesus says, 
My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. The last thing, his mission, his mission. Verse 16, beautiful verse. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Did you notice that he's talking about you? About you and me? He is talking about the Gentile world, the people of every single nation in the world right now. People of every color, every language, every race. And the picture that John, remember the Apostle John, saw and which he so graphically describes in the book of Revelation. I saw a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from every tribe, people and tongue standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. That's Revelation chapter 7 and verse 9. That is God's mission. To populate heaven with a multiracial, multicultural people praising the Lamb of God. Therefore, you and I have the same purpose. That is why God saved us. That is why even in the first place He created us. That is the main purpose of our life on earth. To be engaged in the same mission as God. In the same mission in our homes, in our cities, in our towns, in our villages, everywhere we go. And you know sometimes we think we are unworthy or maybe we think we are too weak. As the song reminds us, He has turned our weaknesses into His opportunities. The very things we think disqualify us actually, actually qualify us because they are used by God. Because we, because you and I, we have known pain and we have found grace in Jesus because you and I have known doubt and trusted God even when we could not fully understand. That gives us something to offer a hurting, crying world. As Paul says, when I am weak, then I am strong. Today, we can come to the Good Shepherd and we can say with David, The Lord is my shepherd. Allow me to close with this true life story. I remember reading this a long time ago. It's a true story of a pastor who visited a little village somewhere in England. He came across a small boy in that village. He took a particular interest and liking to this boy, this young boy, especially when he discovered that he was a shepherd boy. The boy also had very severe learning difficulties. But over the visits over many months to the village, the pastor taught the boy the 23rd Psalm off by heart how to recite it. He showed him how the phrase, The Lord is my shepherd, those five words could be counted on your fingers. The Lord is, sorry, the Lord is my shepherd. The fourth finger is significant, he told him. He taught him he showed him how these, how this phrase, this statement is so vital to life. And he also taught him, he showed him 
that the important word there was my, my, yes, the Lord is my shepherd. And uh, he explained to him about personal faith. He explained how it's fine to know about the story of Jesus, but it is also more important to know him in a personal way in his life. The Lord is my shepherd. The story goes that one winter, the boy got lost in the hills in a particularly severe storm, and by the time they found him the next morning, he had perished in the storm. The doctor who examined him could not understand why the boy was clutching his fourth finger, the fourth finger of his left hand, until the pastor came to speak at the Thanksgiving service. He was able to explain it, and he was able to explain how the word my made all the difference in the world to that little boy, and should to all of us. I wonder, I wonder, if I am speaking to someone today, you have heard many sermons, you have attended church regularly, but you have never really known the Lord is my shepherd. Well, I ask you, before you switch off from this service, in the quietness of this morning, of this moment, turn to Christ. Put your faith in Him. Believe that He died for you on the cross to pay the penalty of sin, of your sin and my sin. And invite Him to be the Lord of your life. Would you do that? Or maybe I'm speaking to a believing Christian today. But today you are struggling. You're struggling with the goodness of God. Jesus says to you, I am the good shepherd. Before you switch off and go out, make sure you go out with the assurance that you do not go out alone, but that the good shepherd goes with you. Lo, I am with you unto the end of the age. Let's pray. Sacrifice, commitment, knowledge, mission. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the confidence and the assurance that we can have today in you, the Good Shepherd of our lives. We have sung all these lovely songs, we have read the 23rd Psalm, we have listened to your word, and now, O oh Lord, more than ever, we all want you to be our Good Shepherd, my Good Shepherd. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, my good shepherd. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you. May this assurance be with each one of us, not only today, but in the days that are ahead, especially these difficult times that we are facing. We pray for ourselves and our families. We pray for our circle of friends. We pray for every member of St. Stephen's Church, those who we know are struggling at this time, those we know who are looking to you for particular answers to prayer, those who may be finding it difficult being alone, isolated, maybe feeling desolate and lonely. Heavenly Father, fill us all with your presence. 
Fill us all with your righteousness, so that we may delight in one another and enjoy the fellowship that you alone can give us. And so, Lord, go with us, not only today, but every day of this week, weeks and months ahead of us. We thank you and we praise you and we pray this prayer in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Let us affirm our faith by saying the Apostles together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and descended to the dead. The third day he rose again, he ascended to heaven, he seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for peace. O God, who is the author of peace and lover of concord, in whose knowledge our eternal life stands, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, from all assaults of evil, that we surely, trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for God's grace. O Lord, our refuge, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by your governance, to do always that which is righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us continue to pray. Friends, we all know the grave situation which we are going through nowadays. We have lost many of our loved ones. We have lost pastors, evangelists, missionaries. We have lost our friends and relatives. We have lost our will wishes and we have lost many people at large. The situation is very much getting worse every day because of the second wave. The whole world is affected. In particular, our Indian nation and many states, the people have been affected. Let us pray for them. Let us pray for the doctors. Let us pray for the health workers, nurses. Let us pray for government officials who are trying to take control over the situation. All the time what we hear from the news is that there is no bed available in the hospital. There is no proper medication available, lack of human resources, and many people are dying every day. We could witness many ambulance vehicles are standing right at, at the entrance of the many hospitals gates. They are not able to enter. Many people are dying 
before they could enter into hospital. People are losing their hope. People are losing their loved ones. It is high time that God has given us a good health to pray for the situation, to help them in whatever manner we can render help. Let's pray. Gracious God and loving Father, we commit and pray for the present grave situation which we are facing. We all cannot question why, why Lord, why this situation is very much bad. But one thing we can ask as a community, Lord have mercy on us. Lord we commit ourselves and we ask for forgiveness. We would like to submit ourselves and we would, we would like to repent ourselves. Remove our iniquities. Thus, Lord, pardon all our transgressions. And Lord, come down to heal the situation. You are the Lord who heals people communities by sending a word that's what we read from psalms you are a master you are almighty god almighty power and you are an ultimate reality that we believe in the lord chagova can do wonders even till today we have a faith in jesus christ who suffered for us and who crucified for us was crucified for us and all the wounds that we could see from the resurrected Jesus Christ even till today helps us understand that God of resurrection can heal us and restore us. Yes Lord, we beg unto your feet O Lord. There are many people affected by Covid standing right at the hospitals, not able to even enter into the hospital and get medicine. And there are many people who go with more confidence that they can save the lives of their loved one, but when they come back home, they see that the loved ones are no more and they are buried or cremated. Lord, have mercy on us. Oh Lord, how long will you keep silence? Break your silence, O oh Lord. As the psalmist says, break your silence. Lord, help us to understand the purpose and redeem us. We also come to pray for our national leaders, Prime Minister and all the cabinet ministers, state ministers, and we pray for our Tamil Nadu Chief Minister, Mr. M.K. Stalin and other team of ministers, and all the district collectors, especially we come to pray for the Nilgiri district collector, Mrs. Innocent Divya and the team, putting all their efforts. But Lord, above all, we have a great power. We have a God who can control over this situation. Grant them wisdom, grant them knowledge so that they will be able to bring down the situation with their own wisdom, knowledge, O oh Lord. And we come and pray for all the nation leaders as they try and see and help the poor and needy, the suffering, be with them, O oh Lord. And we pray for children youth, women, the elders of our church. Help us to pray for one another. Help us to care for one another. Help us to be in solidarity with the situation, O oh Lord. 
as members of St. Stephen's, as members of the communities. Continue to be with us and protect us, O oh Lord. Only you can save us. Only you can grant us good health. Thank you, Lord, for being gracious enough to take care of us all through these days. Continue to do that, O oh Lord. And we come and pray for the children, school-going children, and the high secondary children, those who are waiting for their promotion exams. Be with them, O oh Lord. And also we pray for the university students. They are very, very much worried about their future. They don't know what is going to happen in the near future. But Lord, we know that you will guide them and counsel them in, and direct them in a right way that they will succeed in their endeavors. We come and pray for our church workers, our members, for all of us. We commit each and every one of us into your mighty hand. Continue to protect us, O oh Lord. We also come to pray for all the pastors of our diocese, and pastors at large, we pray for our bishop, Bishop Bama, and for their ministry. Be with each and every one of them, O oh Lord, as they minister unto God's people. Lord, we hope that in the days to come, the COVID-19 spread will be declining and we'll have a good news. The hope, the resurrected Lord Jesus, we pray that Holy Spirit will continue to direct us and guide us and comfort us. In Christ's mighty name, we pray. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of the Father, and sweet coming of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Sin defend us, seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear us when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear us when we pray. Blessed Jesus, we will early turn to Thee. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, we will early turn to Thee. Early let us seek Thy favor, early let us do Thy will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with thy love our lives fulfill. 
Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, loved us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, loved us still. Thank you one and all for joining with us to worship the Lord Almighty. May the good Lord continue to lead us, help us and keep us safe and grant us a good health the days to come. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you.